my hello friends it's Kylie back with you today otherwise known as Paper Sweet Pea and I'm a creative memories advisor here in Australia super happy to be back for another scrap with me times three collaboration today where I'm joining Noreen Smith who is organized and creative mum from Canada and Lauren Hines who is craft some joy from the United States and we thought we would collaborate and create a layout featuring the brand new Creative Memories National Scrapbook Day products. And we thought it would be fun to follow a theme of Easter and incorporate circles for you all. Now, another really exciting thing that's happening today is it's the first time that each of us are offering project PDFs of our layouts. So these are step-by-step -step guides that you can go to uh, each of our websites to download and save or you can print them and put them into a binder. I'm going to pop all of the links to each of our websites below this video so you'll find my PDF on my website and then you can go and find Noreen's on hers and Lauren's on hers and since we've already filmed a couple of collaborations if you would like to see us go back and create some PDFs for our previous layouts do let each of us know and we can put together um, some more PDFs for you and for future use as well. Um, you can also download a cover sheet for a binder so that way you can store all of your Scrap With Me times 3 PDFs in your binder, keep them all organised for future reference and for creating, them, uh, creating our layouts time and time again. But without further ado, once you've watched my video today, make sure you head on over and watch Noreen's and Lauren's as well. Give us all a thumbs up. But for now, let's get started. All right, so I just wanna share just some of the creative memories, tools and products that I'll be working with today in my video to create my layout. I have the brand new Garden Friends designer paper pack, as well as the NSD 2022 project recipe kit. Now the papers, in both of these packs just coordinate and blend so beautifully and I'll be intermixing papers from both and you also receive of course the gorgeous sticker sheet in the project recipe kit. I've pulled out this cute circular laser cut border from the laser cut bundle and I'm also going to be working with my border maker system and I have two cartridges that I'll work with today one is the picket fence cartridge. This is one of two cartridges you receive for free when you first purchase the border maker system. I use it all the time and love it. And I also have the brand new circle chain border maker cartridge. If you follow my paper adventures, you already know how much I love my piece by piece punch set. So many creative ways that you can work with this punch set. I have my custom cutting templates here, or some of them I should say. I have my ovals, I have the circles, and I also have the small heart, as well as all three cutting blades. I have the mini pack of embellishments for NSD 2022, as well as the layered embellishments, which are all beautiful. And I'll also be working with my 12 inch decorative trimmer. That's just some of the products that I'll be working with today. Let's get started. So I'm first going to start working on my background for my layout. And I've selected this beautiful pale blue paper. And this comes from the Garden Friends paper pack. And I'd like to create some decorative panelling just across the top of this page. To which I've selected these two papers from the NSD project recipe kit. And I'm going to be working with both sides of this paper here. So I want the dark blue as well as um, the checkered pattern. And from these, you just need to trim um, a two inch wide strip. I'll only need one strip from this paper. So just with my 12 inch trimmer board and straight blade, just one two inch wide strip. And from this paper, we'll need to cut two two inch wide strips. So one 
and two that way we've got um, both sides so I've got my dark blue side as well as my checkered side and then we just need to cut each strip into four inch long pieces and that's all we need for our trimming board at the moment so we can lift that away I'm also just going to set my background paper aside okay so I'm going to bring in my smallest circle cutting template and I'm also going to work with my red blade. So I'm just going to turn that into the little housing bracket there. And I'm going to take one of my little strips of paper and I'm just going to line it up to any old random line that we've got on our cutting mat. It doesn't matter which, but you just want to make sure that you've got it sitting nice and straight. I'm going to bring in my small circle cutting template and I want to make sure that the top, the outside edge of my um, cutting template is going to be aligned with this next line on my cutting mat. So we want the top edge to the top of this line here. And the way that you can do that, you can either use a piece of paper or I'm actually going to bring in my ruler and this will just help that you get every piece cut the same. So I'm just going to sit my cutting template hard up against my ruler there to get it into place. Slide my ruler away and just using my red blade in that outside track, I'm just going to curve away that very top edge. And this will be what we're left with. Okay, so I'll bring in the next colour, line it up with my ruler to hold it in place. You still want to make sure that you're lining your circle template up as centred as you can on that piece of paper, just so that you get a nice even arch at the top. And we just need to do two of each of the strips that we've cut. Okay, so that completes all of those panelling pieces that we need for our background. So I can put that aside for now. Going to bring back in my background. And I'm just lining that up nice and neat on my cutting mat. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere these into place. And I'm actually going to align the outside edge here down half an inch from the top. And it just leaves a little piece of that top showing. And once they're all in place, um, you'll just see that little bit of the background paper at the top of our arched panels. I'm just gonna work with my repositionable tape so that way if I need to reposition anything I can and as I said I'm just aligning that half an inch down from the top of my page and adhering into place. I'll add my second and of course bring your ruler back in and align at the base of each Make sure that you're going to position that nice and straight all the way along. Okay, and our final piece, I always get nervous when I get to um, the final piece of doing panelled sections like these because you get to see how accurate you work with your cutting. If you find that you have any overhang at all, though, you know, it happens to all of us. You might just need to check your measurements on your cutting to make sure that you are accurate, or you might just need to overlap them a little bit to get it to fit. But that has all of our panelled pieces in place. The next thing we're going to do is add a decorative strip featuring our chain circle border maker cartridge. So I'm going to lift this out of the way for now and I'm going to bring in my border maker system as well as some white cardstock. 
And I also have this gorgeous yellow paper from the Garden Friends paper pack as well. And we need to cut two borders, from, so one from each, I should say. Just going to pop my cartridge into the housing bracket. I'll start with my yellow paper. I'll just fit that into the bracket and fold it out of the way. So there we go, we've got one border. I'll just lift all these pieces out of the way. Just exactly the same, lift that into place. And fold the arm out of the way. So we've got our two borders. And I've selected um, this circular laser cut border from the laser cut bundle because it fits our theme nicely today. We're featuring circles. And what I'm going to do is with the white border strip that we just cut, I'm just going to take my scissors and very carefully cut through it in half. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but just carefully cut through. So you're going to have two arched pieces. And we're going to layer each of these behind the yellow border, just to create a little bit extra interest. So it'll be a matter of just lining that up and adhering it in place so that you can just see a little bit of that white edge behind the yellow. So I'm just going to take my repositional tape and just add a little bit along the very edge of that. Now you may find that you have a little bit of the repositionable tape um, that's showing. And it's, it'll be just a matter of you, with your finger, gently rubbing that away. That's the beauty of this repositionable tape. Very adaptable. Very easy to work with. So just to remove any stickiness that may have been left there, I've just rubbed my finger along the way there. Same thing with the top. So this is where I make a mess of my cutting mat. So I do like to clean it as I go. <laughs> Little fuss pot I am. And I'm just going to adhere that circular border to the top. And then just with my finger, rubbing away any of that adhesive. Like so. So now I can come in with my circular laser cut border and I can actually layer that over the top. And it doesn't fit perfectly to the circles. You'll find it'll probably be just a little bit off balance, but that's okay. It still works in quite well. So just adjusting that to make it fit best you can. To give us our little circular border. So I'll bring back in my background. And I'm just going to place our little border we did probably three quarters of an inch down from the top of our page, if that helps. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just going to run some of my repositional tape and aligning it to three quarters of an inch. 
Okay, so I've brought in my 12 inch decorative trimmer board, which I'll just extend the arm out onto. And I've also pulled both shades of green from the two paper packs. It was the darker green, which has a lovely check, and of course, the lighter green. And I'm just going to create a double layered border for the bottom of my page. So I'll start with the darker green. I'm going to cut this strip to be two inches wide and I'm using the more wavy edge as well. There's our first strip. I love this trimmer board. I use it all the time. I love the effects that you can create with it. I'm going to bring in the second, the lighter green, and this strip is going to be cut at 1.5 inches wide. And we're going to lay those both together. So I'll just lift that out of the way. So as you can see, these borders have come together nicely with the two tones of green. And I'm just going to add um, a decorative element to the lighter green. And to do this, I'm going to use my micro tip scissors. Creative Memories, of course, has two types of scissors. I use the larger for just general cutting and I use the micro tip scissors more for fussy cutting or for what I'm going to do now, which is doing some fringe cutting or point cutting if you like. And I'm basically just going to cut into my curved edge and I'm going down probably oh, a good inch. But what I'm going to do, so if you can have a look, I'll bring it up to the camera, I'm cutting into it about an inch, but as this curve changes, I'm going to keep where I stop or try and keep where I stop to the same point. So at the high point of the curve, I'm cutting in an inch, but as that goes down into um, the valley, I guess you call it, it's probably coming back to be about half an inch. This doesn't have to be perfect and I'm only sort of cutting you know, each fringe to be a couple of millimetres wide. I can show you there and you can see up close, I've pretty well kept that finish line fairly well straight. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to here and there cut down into our fringing to remove pieces. This just breaks up the edge that little bit. Again, you don't have to be too tidy and I'm changing the angle of my scissors into which way that I cut. It's just to break up our grass, if you like. And you can see there, it just if we were to ruffle that a little bit, that now just has that little bit of interest from removing a piece here and there. If you want to go back in and add, or remove, sorry, any extra, you can. Giving our grass a haircut like so. I'll remove all those little pieces. So I'm going to bring back in my border and just add some tape to position our grass. And I'm going to allow probably about a quarter of an inch um, from the bottom that I adhere this second layer. And I'm going to come in now with my little picket fence border maker cartridge. and bring back in our white cardstock. So I'm just going to remove our circle cartridge. Make sure that it clicks into that bracket. And we're just going to create a cute little picket fence for our grass. Just lift that out of the way. Now you will have to run this through the 12 inch trimmer board once you've punched it because as you can see it doesn't um, just gives the edge of the picket fence so we need to remove it from our paper. So I'll just get our confetti out of the way. Okay and I'm just going to align that into my trimmer board. I 
just a few millimeters to remove that from the cardstock sheet. So I'm going to add that over the top of our grass. You can see it all coming together now. Okay, so I'm going to adhere that to the base of our page. like so. And now that's pretty much prepared our background for our layout. So now we can actually start creating a cute little bunny. So I'll lift that away for now. And I've selected these two papers to create my bunny. I'm also going to need just some black cardstock and some white cardstock as well. But we'll get started just with um, the bunny's body and limbs to start with. And I'm going to be working with the large circle cutting template. And for his body, we're going to use the red blade on the inside track. I'm going to use this beautiful um, cream or beige toned paper that was in the Garden Friends paper pack. So with my red blade, that will give us a base for our bunny's body. And for his head, I'm going to work with the exact same template. Only this time I'm going to work with my blue blade. I'll just turn that over into the housing bracket. Line up my little plugs. And that will give us our bunny's head. Next I'm going to bring in my ovals and I've got the largest oval template here. And we need to cut two using the blue blade on the inside track. So that's one. And a second, I think I'll fit it there on the edge. Wanted to buckle there, so I've just gone around the other way. Just made it fit. Okay, so we've got our two ovals. Then with the second smallest oval template, and I'm going to work with my green blade. And we need to cut two of these. One, two. Okay, I'm gonna bring back in these shapes so we can start to put them together and you'll start to see the bunny come together. All right, so just with my repositionable tape, it's going to add a little bit to the top of the body and just adhere the head to the very top of that circle, like so. These are our bunny's enormous feet which will go at the front like so. So I can, a little bit more repositionable tape to the body. And we've got them on that angle facing outwards. You can have them overlapping a little if you like. like so. And then these are our little bunny's arms. And what I'd like to do for these, because we are working with solid colour to help these to stand out, I'm just going to adhere these with some small foam squares. It'll add a little bit of dimension. So one arm, um, 
and our second. I should say arm, it's front paw, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get technical here. <laughs> All right, so next I think what we'll do is cut our ears. Now, even though we've got some fabulous oval cutting templates for creative memories, I just thought they were a little bit too rounded for a bunny's ears when I made my little sample. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer board and I'm going to trim a two inch wide strip of that same paper. Like so. And from that strip, I'm going to cut them into two 4.5 strips, like so. I've got a little piece that's left over that can be used for something else. Okay, and I'm bringing back in the second smallest oval template again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully just fold that just very lightly in half. I, I certainly haven't put a strong crease line, but just folded that in half. And I have the fold here on the left side. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in my template and I want to align that fold line in the center to the, in, the very inside of my oval template. And what you're going to find is that will fit perfectly um, to the length of that ear that we've cut. So I might just hold that up closer to the camera because this is an important step, just so you can see that closer. But I'm aligning, this is my folded edge on that strip of paper and I'm aligning it to the very inside edge of my oval and keeping it centered as best I can, like so. And with my red blade on the outside track, I'm just going to cut an arch. This is why it's important that you have the fold on the inside edge there of the oval, because now when I fold that out, you can see I've been left with a lovely bunny ear. And I know that you can see a little bit of that crease, but by the time we're finished, we're going to add a liner to this ear. It does add just that little bit of character to your ear anyway. And that's why I don't sort of crease it too fiercely. I just lightly bring it together. And just the same deal for the second ear. I'm aligning that inside edge to the crease line and you are going through two layers of paper so you'll have to put a little bit of pressure on those blades. Oh, I wanted to jump away on me. So yeah, a little bit of pressure to cut through both pieces. But these blades are sharp as we all know. And you can see there you've got your second ear. Now, if you want to, if you sort of end up with a little bit of a straight edge there at the top, which I have, you can just bring in your scissors. I'm being really fussy there. It's like the tiniest amount. I'm just going to round off the top of each ear. Barely see what I removed. But there we have our two bunny ears. So they will go behind the head there. Now I want to start adding just some character pieces, I guess you'd call it. This would have to be one of my most favorite papers. It's like a gingham with a tiny little flower. I absolutely love it and it's gonna pain me to cut it because I love it that much. It's easily a paper that I could hoard. I love it. All right, so bringing back in my 12 inch trimmer again, and this is for the lining of the ear. This time we're going to cut a strip to be 1.75 inches wide. There we go. And again, we're going to make these four inches long. So we just need two. 
and save your little scrap piece. You might like to use it for something else. Okay, I just want to show you, we're going to line it up for the first um, layer of the ear. We lined up the inside right to the inside track here. For this lining for the ear, I'm going to line it up to this marking here. So just the outside of that inside track. So the outside of the inside, that's so confusing. <laughs> but you'll see what I mean yourself when you line that up on your cutting board. And you can see I've got that perfect arched shape and it's been aligned to the inside there. I'll bring it up to the camera to show you. But you can see it's aligned just to the inside of this edge here. Keeping your oval nice and straight, like so. And again, I'm using my red blade to go through two layers, like so. And that when you open that up, we'll have a lining for our ear that we'll be able to add to the bottom like so, just to add that little bit of extra colour. So I'm going to do the same thing for his second piece, making sure that that fold line is on the inside, aligning it on the template, and just cutting that around. like so. And again with the top, if you feel you'd just like to round that edge just that little bit, you can. I am because I'm being fussy. Okay, so that's got both parts for our ear complete. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sort of bring it down probably, oh, I guess I'd say one third from the top. I can actually just cut a bit of that base away because we're not going to see it. And again with my repositionable tape. And you can see by not really folding that, that ear, creasing it too harshly, you can't really see the fold line too much. And what you can see just adds that little bit of extra um, definition. So I'm going to hear that about a third of the way down and I can cut off that bottom edge. So I've got two cute little ears and they're going to tuck in behind the head like so. Once you're happy with the position of those you can go ahead and adhere them into place. Okay starting to look like a cute bunny. I'm going to actually bring back in that little scrap piece we had from the ears and I'm going to just create some um, little foot accents for our bunny. I'll see if I can fit both from this strip. But I've got my second smallest oval and I'm working with my green blade. I'll cut one. And yes, I will. So there you go. There's no wastage from that strip that we cut from that paper. You can use whatever paper you like for your bunny. And I'm going to add these to his little feet. Like so. one here. We've got one there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just start working on some of his facial features. And I'm again bringing back in my white card stuff. And to start with, I'm going to just bring in my smallest circle template and work with the blue blade. And I need to cut two circles this size the same. So one, two, 
And these are going to be our little bunny's nose. And I'm next going to bring in my smallest oval. And I'm going to work with the green blade and cut two. So one, two. These will be for eyes. Okay, so I've got some black cardstock now and I again with my smallest oval template and with the blue blade, I'm going to cut two. Okay, so I can lift that aside for now. I'll bring our little bunny back in. From the two white ovals that we can, these will be positioned in behind our little nose, like so. And then the same, we're just going to layer these over the top, but what we might do is get these in place. I'm just going to add a little bit of repositionable tape onto the back of the eyes. And again, these can overlap just that little bit if you like. And I can add our oval centers. I'm just gonna add his little nose there and I'm going to do so with foam squares. It's just one on the back of each. Come back in with my black card stock. My desk is starting to get very messy. <laughs> I'm just going to trim a very, very skinny strip of paper. It's only, as you can see, a few millimeters wide. And we're going to create some little whiskers for him. And I think we'll make them, I think, three inches long. So we'll need three. One, two, and a final third. And this will be where I bring in, <clears throat> excuse me, where I bring in my precision point glue pen. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to either side of his little nose there. And we're just going to crisscross our whiskers. If you need to use your all-purpose tool, you can. For our final strip. Use our tool to hold that in place for a few seconds. This glue is really strong. It doesn't take long to adhere into place. Okay, so bringing back in my yellow paper and the piece by piece punch set that has the heart. I just want to punch a heart for the nose. So, and just with another little foam adhesive square I'll adhere that nose over the top of our bunny. Now, again with the same punch, just bringing back in my black cardstock. And I just want one of those cute little half moons, which is, you can see, the tiniest piece. But I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny, cute little mouth. to the side there. So this is where I need my all-purpose tool. Just a little bit of glue. And pop that into place. 
Okay, so I'll bring back in our background. There's still a few little things I want to add to our bunny. It's all coming together very sweetly. Get that our bunny here. I just want to add some cute little toe beans to our bunny. And I find the circle on this punch was just a bit too small. And the blue blade on our smallest circle template in the middle was a little bit too big. However, the circle that gets punched out um, from the middle of the circle chain border maker cartridge is just the perfect size. So I'm going to do a little freehand punching. I'm just going to pop that cartridge back in. I'm bringing back in my favourite gingham paper to which I'm just going to freehand punch twice. And the circles that uh, have fallen out are the perfect size to be our bunny's little toe beans. So I might use my repositionable tape for these. It's a little bit of repositionable tape and I'm just going to adhere them around the foot like so. Again, it just adds a little extra detail to your bunny. That top toe will need to just stick out underneath his paw. There we go. It's looking rather cute. Same for this foot. Now I have made this a single page design, but you could quite easily um, create a two page if you like. Can't quite see that one, bring it down a little bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to bring in the layered flower from the layered embellishment pack and i just want to add that to our little bunny's ear now i know you're probably thinking what bunny has a flower on their ear but as i always say if it looks cute it doesn't need to make sense and here's a spring bunny a little easter bunny so i've just added that little cute embellishment to his ear Okay, so it's time to bring in our photos and start placing those. I've got three photos that I'd like to use on this page. I'm thinking I'd like to tuck one just behind the grass a little bit there. And then I've got two smaller here that I can place next to the bunny. Now what I've done, I've actually cut my photos down and I need to cut some mats for those. I'll tell you the sizes of those in a moment, but I've got some of the blue cardstock here that I'm going to trim down. So the first one I'm going to trim is to six by four. And then I need to trim two four by four photo mats. That might be the perfect size there. Oh, it's close. It's so close. I'll have a little check. Okay, and I'll bring back my layout. Right, so this is a six by four photo mat. And I've basically just removed the smallest slither from my photo. So it's 3.75 by 5.75. And over my 6x4 mat, you'll see it'll just give it that perfect um, frame. And then for my two 4x4 four four photo mats, these photos were cut down to 3.75 by 3.75. So again, that'll just give us a perfect frame. Okay, 
I might tuck it in behind the grass a little there as well. And there's our second photo there. Perfect. So now what we need to do is finish off with some embellishments. And I've got some options to share with you. Right, so we have this open area to the top of the layout. You could leave it as is if you wish, or it's the perfect corner to add a little bit of journaling. And just as an example, I've taken this little card from the mini embellishment pack and I've just cut some eggs out um, to adhere to the top of that. I did that by using the small heart cutting template with the red blade on the inside track. And you could, of course, add extra um, embellishments and stickers over your eggs if you like. But that would be the perfect size for adding a little journal block there. You could also create a title using, again, any of the stickers from the project recipe kit or the sans serif or serif alpha stickers from Creative Memories as well. That would be perfect onto your card. Another option, which is what I'm going to use on my layout, um, if you have a silhouette or a cricket and you use cut files, I've designed some Easter themed titles um, that will correspond with this layout or any of your spring or Easter layouts. They're available on my website, which I will link directly below this video. But I've selected a fun little title. It's Some Bunny Loves You. And I've cut mine from the same um, card stock that I used to back my photos. And I'm just going to piece my title together where I want it to sit. I've sized it to what I think will work best for my page. Um, I love working with large titles. I just think they add so much character to a page. So I've got this one here. Some Bunny Loves You, which I think I will work with for that corner. Yes, that works, fits in nicely. So I'm going to use my repositionable tape, just a little on the back. So I've just got a few little extras to finish off my page. I really love this gorgeous layered embellishment from the layered embellishment pack that says hello. So I'm going to add that next to our little bunny. And I'm thinking I really love this kite. And one final little sticker, I wanted to add one of the cute bees. And again, even though it's a sticker, I'm adding a foam square just so that it gives my page that little bit of dimension. So I'm going to add over my photo there. And that will complete our page. So there you have it, friends. We've completed our layout. One very cute bunny incorporating our circle border. Thank you so much for watching me create this today. And don't forget to head over and check out Noreen and Lauren's videos as well. And don't forget to pop past each of our websites where you can obtain our PDF project guide for today's layouts. Remember, if you're in the United States and you would like more information or help with Creative Memories products to drop Lauren a line. If you're in Canada, you can get in touch with Noreen. Or if you're here in Australia, you can drop me a line as well. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.